Hey all and welcome back to another video by Umbra's Darkness. In today's video we got two different topics we're going to cover for you guys. Uh, all to do with the previous update. First we're going to wrap up my final thoughts and feelings about the underground cave and mutation flora. With that we're going to give you some tips and strategies on how to go further with the cells and how the best way to upgrade the cells. So if you're curious about cells uh, please stay tuned. The second thing that we're going to talk to you guys about is the Alliance Expedition. The Alliance Expedition Rainforest has unlocked and all of the patch notes have been uh, given to us. So without, with that we're going to be reading them out loud for those that listen while they're driving in their car or whatever. Uh, and we're going to be giving you my first hot takes, my first opinions on it. Uh, what I think the best tips and strategies and a little bit of guidance in how I would do this. Without any further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to talk about with this update, uh, before we talk about these two buildings, is we want to talk about the pay-to-win ornament that came out. As you can see, I did buy it. Uh, I actually really like this. It doesn't give a significant change uh, at all to anything that you can notice. And it's $5, so that way the free-to-play players aren't at a disadvantage really at all. And the pay-to-win players get something that make their accounts look cool. It's a good way for the for the developers to make money without doing anything crazy or stupid. Uh, so I'm all for this. I honestly wish the ornaments didn't give any buffs at all. I would have still bought it. It still makes my anthill look a little bit cooler. But I understand why they gave it a super small buff that, again, in the long run, means nothing. That 0.2% health isn't going to change anything. The next thing we're going to talk about inside of the pack shop that I want to point you guys out. As you can see, if you buy all of the 4 star or if you buy all of the one 3 star ornaments, uh, they all disappear. So I like that it's not replaced by a $50 pack, a $100 pack like most of these packs change to. Um, I think that that's really cool. So these are the 3 packs that you're left with. Again, the 4 star pack disappears and the 3 star pack uh, as you can see, is gone. Um, so I really like that that it's not just like a pay to win every every step of the ladder. Again, I think that's really good for the developers. Uh, the so with that, let's get into what everyone can do: the cave challenge. Uh, as you can see, there are only four challenges with a maximum of 100 points each. This clearly shows that we will have all seven days, like my initial video. Uh, pointed out because in order to max out you need 650 points 650 points would not be possible until you have six and a half days available uh or 700 points here for the shikri uh fragmaster so there's your 700 uh it's out of order here sorry i i lost it but it clearly shows that there's 700 points here, so there will be another three days released. I really like that. I hope that the build day has something to do with the rally centers. I think that that's all it should really have to deal with. Uh, I don't think it should do anything more. It could kind of be like with the special ant day, where it does only pro march unit 1, march unit 2, and then it increases size for the first three automatically. Uh, then hatch day, I think, should be really obvious. Whatever troop you have unlocked, whatever tier you have unlocked, should be the troop that you get to use instead of everyone being able to use T9s. Uh, and then I have no idea what I'd like to see for the special ant or for the choose your own day, but I really like this. I think it's cool. It shows where the content's going to get released, uh, and it use it uses content that's already been released. It's not adding more things to do. Uh, with that being said, there is the cell challenge, so we'll go ahead and t hop on over to my mutation flora. As you can see, the mutation flora allows for six cells to be activated at any given time. Uh, this is by far, the venom gland is by far the most important cell. Uh, as you can see, I do have it at four stars. Uh, I am a dirty pay to win player. I apologize for that. Um, I do have a free-to-play account that I can show you guys if you guys are ever curious about that. A couple of things that I do want to point out with this is that if you go to Enhance, you can use things that are lower than it, 7s or 1s or the 500 experience. But if I click on this 2-star uh, and I click Enhance, I cannot use any of the 3-star materials. And that is because uh, its buffs 
if you look at its buffs and then you compare it to the level 7 version of it, its buffs are not uh, higher or equal to it, so you can't use it as a material. I think that that's kind of cool in that um, you can never make a mistake and feed your strongest piece to where you need to go. I think that that's kind of poopy because I think star levels uh, should automatically override it. I really don't like uh, that they don't, right? Uh, just because I have a two star that's maxed out, if I decide to go spend the $10 like I did to unlock the three stars, I should be able to immediately feed the two star to the three star. Uh, going into that though, I would like to show you guys the best way to level up your uh, stuff. So if we click here, we click enhance and we add one of these, right, to it. Uh, as you can see, it only adds 300 experience. However, if I click here, I star this up and I go ahead and star up this two star level one item. Uh, and then I go here and I click enhance and I go to use it. It multiplies its experience a uh, hundredfold, right? Uh, it goes from 300 to 30,000. So it is a hundred times better. Um, and as you can see, it, does, it uh, doesn't matter what, whether or not it's the same type or anything like that. Um, so I think that that's really cool. And then, uh, so we're gonna get to level seven. We're gonna confirm the enhancement. And all of a sudden, we can use these other three-star level seven pieces of equipment in order to get there. Uh, I think that that's a really cool feature. I think that that's beneficial. I don't see any negative sides to that. Uh, it does show you the best way to enhance is to buy two-star materials from the Alliance store and then subsequently feed them uh, or star them up and feed them. Everyone can get minor nucleuses uh, as of right now. As of right now, there's no way for free-to-play players to get major nucleuses. Uh, that being said, I'd like to show a screenshot that I have. As you can see, uh, in order to go from 5-star to 6-star, this is 5-star to 6-star, it does require 2,500 minor nucleuses and 500 major nucleuses. That is a whole lot, you guys. Hopefully, the Alliance Expedition does give us a way to acquire major nucleuses. But for now, that would mean that the maximum potential of a free-to-play player is to get to 5-star. Um, which, hopefully, they don't gatekeep free-to-play to pay to win uh, in that way. And there is a way to earn major nucleuses beyond the first pass-through shop. Because the first pass-through shop will not give you enough to level up every single solitary one. Uh, to six star for those that are curious in order to star up uh, a four star it does take only 1,000 minor nucleuses which I think is okay because you can get these free to play uh, through the lizard in my alliance we do the lizard uh, 10 times a day uh, level 30 so that way everyone has a chance to get their uh, Small nucleuses. Uh, three star as or two stars we just saw it was 30 and three star is 200. Um, so that that's is what it is. Uh, hopefully again as we as I said the alliance expedition does make it easier to get these materials, especially the major nucleuses introduces a way for free to play players to get major nucleuses. Uh, otherwise, I think that that would be a pretty big issue, um, but we haven't seen the Alliance Expedition yet. We don't know what the rewards are. We're just hoping one, in one hand, um, praying in another. So we'll see We'll see what happens in that regard. Uh, again, the best cell to introduce is the Venom Gland cell. Always maintain that one the highest. Uh, as you can see, I did not do that so far. Um, I apologize, I made a mistake early on and leveled up the pincer cell, um, but I will eventually get this one to the highest and I will be starring this one to five star first. So yeah, with that you guys, that's everything I have for the new update in regards to the two new buildings and 
how I feel about the pay to win ornament. Uh, and we're going to go talk about the Alliance Expedition Rainforest now. So the Alliance Expedition Rainforest, if we click on it and then we click on Battleground Details, you'll see the introduction. The development of the Alliance is gradually on track. Numerous resource tunnels were constructed to maintain aids and connections between allies. Somehow, one day, a lucky ant got lost during transporting resources, but it found a huge underground gap. This gap can be used as a neutral underground tunnel at the end of which there is a whole new land. Countless resources await us to explore. However, this fortune is accomplished by bad news. The scout team discovered traces of other alliances. These unknown opponents carry no goodwill. Get ready for the upcoming expedition to the new land. All right, you guys, that's a great background story. I hope you guys enjoy it. I think that that sets us up really well, showing that we're going to have to fight another alliance. Two alliances matched by the system will enter a whole new map and have a fierce battle. Resource points can be gained by occupying the natural transport tunnel or the aromic conjax and gathering agavs. Uh, with that being said, the... Aromic Conjax and Gathering Agavs is going to be for your weaker players, and the Natural Transport Tunnel is going to be for your higher level players. We'll get into that as we go. Uh, the battle duration is one hour, so you're only asking your alliance to be available for one hour. When the time ends, the team will, with higher resource points will win the match. Rich rewards will be awarded according to win or loss of the personal points obtained. Entrances above ground linked with the underground tunnel. A few natural transport tunnels on the battleground will open randomly. After fully occupied, the tunnel rulers from Occupying Alliance will be able to teleport around the tunnels. A huge amount of resource points will be given after, the full, after fully occupying the natural transport tunnels. Big guys go and occupy the natural transport tunnels. They port around. They hit each other. You want a bunch of big guys available. Is what it is. Aromic Conjax flowers giving out exotic smells, attracting all surrounding insects. Aromic Conjax have a very short blossom time. A huge amount of resource points will be awarded after capturing. Super simple, super straightforward. Uh, Agav, a special species of Agav, grow in the rainforest. Units set to them will bring the huge amount of resources. Also, a huge amount of resource points and personal points will be gained too. There are three tiers of Agav, primary, secondary, and tertiary, just like everything else. I like that. Agavs, Agavs with higher tiers will be awarded more resource points. All right, sounds like they're using the same uh, reward system, same tiers, pretty straightforward. White, blue, red this time instead of white, blue, or blue, purple, orange, but still pretty straightforward. Areas around the natural transport tunnels, rulers can teleport their anthills to safe zones around the natural transport tunnels occupied by their own alliances. Only units inside the safe zone can send out gathering units. So again, the gathering units are going to be how you're going to get Agavs. So your uh, free-to-play, your low spender, your weak players are going to be able to teleport in and use the transport tunnels in order to gather agavs. Uh, however, the soil quality there is not stable as in other areas. Therefore, alliances inside the safe zone cannot participate in battles and also will not get attacked. All right, great. So those that don't want to PvP, gather agavs. Sweet. Expedition rules. The natural transport tunnels will provide a small area of safe zone around them. Natural transport tunnels will open gradually as the battle pro processes. Natural transport tunnels can be occupied by alliances after opening. Stationing units to the natural transport tunnels can get control of it. If the opponent units are getting control of the natural transport tunnels, they can be expelled by attacks. At most, eight units can be stationed inside the natural transport tunnels. All right, sweet. So it's squirters. You hit the squirter, keep going, hit the squirter, keep going. Uh, but in this case, it's transport tunnels. You're going to want to make sure your strongest eight people or your strongest eight units go to the transport tunnels. Sweet, straightforward, uh, very easy. Natural transport tunnels will be fully occupied by one side when, uh, when they are controlled by one side for five minutes so it sounds like after they're controlled by one side for five minutes uh they can't be hit anymore and they can teleport their anthills to the safe zone around the natural transport tunnels 
so if you're going against an alliance, you want to make sure they don't gain it, or else their low low players and free to play players will be able to gather agavs. Uh, occupied natural transport tunnels will become closed after 10 minutes. Rulers can use this period to or time to gather high tier agavs. After fully occupying the natural transport tunnels, stationed units will gain extra personal points for rulers. Those that do the fighting gain more points. Sweet. Aromic Conjax will offer continuous alliance points. The first Aromic Conjax will open 20 minutes after the match begins. When the match begins, two alliances can fight to occupy the Aromic Conjax. Stationing units, the uh, Aromic Conjax can get control of it. If the opponent units are getting control of the Aromic Conjax, they can be expelled by attacks. Alright, so the Aromic Conjax are the exact same as uh, troop tunnels, except for troop tunnels give safe zones and Aromic Conjax don't. Obviously, it is significantly more beneficial to go after troop tunnels. The Aromic Conjax will be fully occupied by one side when they are controlled for five minutes. After fully occupying the Aromic Conjax for, for each minute, it will award the Alliance 500 resource points. Occupied Aromic Conjax will become closed after 10 minutes and will be opened again after two more minutes. So they cycle every 12 minutes uh, at a maximum, plus the five minutes, so 17 minutes. So the most that you'll be able to do a Roman Conjac and gain and get those 500 points would be three times. Uh, it sounds like they're worth it, but the troop tunnels will be better if you have a lot of low spenders. So if you're if you have a lot of people that can't hit if, or they have T6s, T7s, and you're going against people who have T8s, T9s, or even T10s, uh, you're going to want to go for the troop tunnels. If you have a bunch of strong people that can just bully their way into anything, then you could go for the Aromic Conjax. Uh, I know my alliance personally will probably go for the natural transport tunnels first. After fully occupying the Aromic Conjax, station units will gain extra personal points for the rulers. I really like that there are personal points. It means that... If I participate really strongly, but my alliance still loses, I still get something. There was still a point for me wasting an hour of my life playing this game consecutively. I think that that's really cool. Collect the Agavs in the battleground. Resource points and personal points will be given to those March units uh, when they return to the Anthills. So just like with gathering on uh, server versus server kill event day, you get points when it returns to the Anthills. Uh, they are related to the low capacity of the units. So, if you're like me and you're a carrier main, you'll gain more points. Hopefully everyone's a carrier main, because I tell them to be. If you're a shooter main, no worries. Just means you're going to have to send out to gather more frequently. I'm sure that there is a point, just like uh, with normal gathering, that your capacity just reaches such a high level. It doesn't matter what you main or how many you have, because your gathering capacity is over a million or whatever. Soldier Ant, Injury, and Revive. In the battleground, all participant rulers, Soldier Ants, will only be severely injured or slightly injured. Attacking opponents' Ant Hills will not cause Soldier Ants to die. All severely injured Soldier Ants will enter the Revival Flora. The Soldier Ants can be healed by spending Revival Fungi there. All injured Soldier Ants will be automatically healed after leaving the, ba uh, the battleground. I like that, you guys. Uh, it's a new way to test. Go nuts, go ham. And you'll get everything back afterwards. It does sound like uh, you'll be able to hit players' anthills, though. So you'll be able to lose resources. So pay attention to that. Don't have a bunch of resources stocked up. Uh, unit marches. All operations of units inside the battleground will not consume any stamina. I like that. You get to use all your stamina before you go into battle. And it won't affect anything. If the ruler leaves the battleground during the matches... The ruler's personal points will not reset. The points will be recorded till the match ends, and the personal point rewards will be awarded according to the points earned before the ruler leaving the match. If the ruler uh, leaves the match, they will not be able to re-enter the ba battleground. Uh, this is intentionally. Uh, if the ruler leaves because of a network issue or other reasons, they'll be able to. They will still be able to re-enter the battleground. I'm kind of curious how they'll be able to tell that. Um, like, can you just swap to airplane mode and then you have a network issue? I don't I don't really understand that. Um, but if, if this works out and it can't be abused too much, then I think that that's kind of cool. It means that you get to play for five minutes, still get some sort of reward, still help out your alliance. But you don't have to set aside your entire, you know, 
day to go do this thing. Sign up requirements. Only alliances with at least 30 minutes. members can sign up for the match. Easy. And hill level must be over level 8. No injured soldiers in healing pools. All march units are inside the anthill. There are no other alliance member reinforcement units stationed in your anthill. That's super easy. It gives your alliance a sign up requirement and then it gives you a requirement um, that you can easily control. I don't see any of these things being an issue if you're doing this. Uh, healing pools don't don't matter until you're in kill event. It does mean that you can't um, it does mean you can't be at the tree during this event, which is it is what it is. Uh, and then no other alliance members reinforcement units station near Ant Hill. I guess that makes sense because if they're not going into the battleground, they shouldn't be able to help you. Uh, process summary, the alliance sign up. Uh, so Wednesday of the event opening week is the sign up day. The alliance members over R4 can sign up for their alliance on the event page of the event tab. After successfully signed up, rulers cannot withdraw or join other alliances. So it sounds like the R4 or R5s are going to be able to sign you up and then you personally sign up and you're stuck inside of that alliance until the end of the week. You enter the battleground when the match begins. Rulers can enter the battleground at any time before the match ends. But do not exit the battleground after entered. Rulers cannot re-enter the battleground after exiting the match. Uh, again, there was something about network issues, so I'm curious how that will work. Make sure all units are inside your anthill before entering the battleground and no injured ants are waiting for healing pools inside your healing pools. After entering the battleground, all temporary buffs will be deactivated. Uh, so don't have a gathering buff going. Don't have anything like that because they'll just be terminated. The battle begins in the battleground. The blue side's initial location is at the bottom part of the map and the initial location of the red side is at the top part of the map. Cool, you're blue or red. You're either at the top or the bottom. Stage 1, preparation period. During the 10 minutes before the match begins, it will be the preparation period. Players can enter the battleground within the period. However, rulers will not be able to teleport their anthills, occupy any buildings, or send any units. But rulers can check the location of the fortresses on the map and use alliance mark functions. I like that if you use Steam or if you use uh, Line or if you use Discord like I do, you'll be able to talk to your alliance members and work out a strategy. Stage 2, the battle period. When the match begins, Natural Transport Tunnel and AGAVs will open. Players will be able to gain points by stationing at the Natural Transport Tunnels or gathering from AGAVs. Alright, you guys. Pretty straightforward. It's just going to be Alliance versus Alliance. It's going to be cross-server, so you're not going to have to worry about fighting in your same servers. Um, you're going to be able to register as an R4. You have individual requirements and... Uh, there's no loss to you guys except for the resources in your anthill, so there's no reason not to participate. A lot of reasons that you gain. Um, I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Someone told me that this would be interesting if I would just read it and talk to you guys about my initial thoughts. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's awesome. An hour to bond as an alliance. Uh, right now, there's not really anything that bonds you as an alliance. There's only things that really bond you as a server, so... I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about, y about it, you guys. Um, I hope that you guys are as well. If you have any questions, I can give you my best thoughts, uh, my best opinions on the matter. But I know as much as you guys do right now, the content creator chant in Discord is not very productive or informational. Uh, hopefully that changes soon and I'll be able to help you guys out a little bit more. Uh, without any further ado, as always, you guys... You can catch me in the YouTube comments. You can find me on Discord. My username is in the description below. Or, worst case scenario, as I always say, you can catch me on server 174. Until next time, you guys, stay humble, stay happy, stay hungry. Bye, y'all.